Episode 23 is coming up in just a second. My guest, Isabel Schroeder, recently played Uncle Fester in a production of The Addams Family. So, to celebrate that, I'm going to put a light bulb in my mouth, just like Uncle Fester does. Here we go. I think I swallowed it. Huh. Fibery. This episode of the From What I Know coming at you. These are the performers I know, I know. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know, I know. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know, I know. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know, I know. These are the performers I know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another fun-filled episode of The Performers I Know. This is episode number 23. Oh, yes. This week, all the way from Studio Colorado, we have as our guest, she's an actress, singer, a dancer, and she was on a Netflix show, if you can believe that. I'm very excited for this. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest for this episode is none other than Isabella Schroeder. Isabella, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. No problem. So, once upon a time, about two years ago, roughly, I was doing a revival of my seminal Christmas show, uh, The Young Sherlock Holmes Caper at Christmas. And I was looking for somebody to play the role of Grace Duvall, the young, demure, shy ingenue and the love interest of Sherlock Holmes. And Isabella was amongst the young ladies who auditioned for the show. And she just nailed it very early on in her audition. And I knew right then and there that I wanted to have her play Grace Duvall. It was fantastic. Now, Izzy, my first question to you, as I ask all of my guests on the show, what got you bitten by the performing bug? What got you into singing and dancing and doing cartwheels and flips and juggling chainsaws and acting and all that wacky stuff? Good question, Dane. Um, I first got into acting when I was around nine in 2019. My mom looked on kids casting and she found that a local acting company nearby was performing Aladdin Jr. And she asked me if I would like to be a part of it. Of course, I said yes, because I, my favorite Disney princess ever was, is, was um, Princess Jasmine. So I was like, yeah, of course I want to do that. So I auditioned and we, when we performed in a practice, I could not stay out of the spotlight. No matter where the scene was, I was there. It was just amazing. You know, we, we always love people with that kind of enthusiasm yeah. in the uh, theater industry, yes. Um, but before we get into other stuff that Isabella has done with me, let's, as I said just a moment ago, Isabella was on a Netflix show. That's right. You know, we've had people who are on, we've had guests who were on a Broadway stage. We've had a guest who was on Sesame Street. Now we got somebody who was on a Netflix show. Uh, I believe it was called Making Fun. Yes. Yes. Now, how how did that come about? How did you guys get yourselves on the uh, show Making Fun? And tell us, tell us a little bit about what the show is. So Making Fun is a show where one to two kids get to tell five men how or like what to build. So when my mom, she found it on Kids Casting yet again, and she was like, let's audition for this. So we auditioned and we did a Zoom call with um, um, a lady that was on the show. And she said that we were the most entertaining people that she had met with all day. So we got the job. 
And then we started Zooming and recording at home. And we would get to design a car that was shaped like a shoe. <laughs> so that was ours. It was a panda soccer shoe car. A panda, and... a panda soccer shoe car. Not, not necessarily in that order, of course. No, yeah, it was that order. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So, like, um, what, well, like, what percentage of it was the panda, and what percentage was the soccer? I, I'm, I'm a little confused now. Well, because the car was a soccer shoe, and it had been decorated with pandas. Because when we were filming, we uh, Olivia, my sister, who was also in the show with me was really into soccer so they incorporated that and made it a soccer shoe as the car and I was super into panda I still am so they made a soccer car and decorated it with pandas and then we got to design the rest of it okay well I mean I've seen clips of the show and uh, it seems like a very a lot of wacky stuff happens on there so Yes, I think the wackier the better. I'm gonna assume is the um, is the, the the saying for the show. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Well, all right. We'll get that uh, get that right in my memory banks. You know, if I want. Okay, kids, do you want to make a a, a water purification system or do you want <laughs> to make a pie launching? Oh pies, 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 pies. Yes. So, um, yes, Izzy played Grace Duvall in my, uh, one of my revivals of Young Sherlock Holmes, The Caper of Christmas, and she got to do a nice demure British accent. Now, do accents come naturally to you, or was that something that you had to kind of work on a little bit? I think it depends on the accent, but if I get assigned to it, I can pick it up pretty easily. Um, I've been doing British accents for a long time since the first time I watched Harry Potter Hermione was like a role model to me so like every other week I would end up speaking in a British accent all day so that one was more natural than most <laughs> all right well you know it's funny because the uh, the boy who played opposite you Dominic DeGravio he <laughs> was the type where if he was really concentrating on the accent he can do it but as soon as he started, like, just concentrating on the words, suddenly he became American. Oh. And I was just like, Dominic, I, I'm going to need you to concentrate because we can't have we can't have Sherlock Holmes drifting in and out of an accent. You know, it's, it's no good. It's no good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he no, he was able to get it all under control by the end. So that was lovely. Yeah. And uh, I got to play your dad. Uh, yes. Professor Duvall, yes. You were my daughter. You were my daughter from one of the shows. Yes, I was. Yes, you were. <laughs> you, you were your own daughter? That's weird. I don't know how did that happen? It's I, I've, done some, I've done some crazy casting, but not that crazy. <laughs> and what was it like working on um, some that kind of a, a virtual voiceover production? Had you done uh, voiceover work before, or was it the first time you've ever done it? That was the first voiceover I ever did, and it was actually really fun. I liked it a lot. It was a lot less scary, in a way, than, like, performing on stage, because in a way you could mess up, but in a way it had to be perfect, because you couldn't do it too many times. But it was a really interesting and new opportunity and job for me, so I think it was a really, really fun. It was fun to me. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. See, the beautiful part about voiceover work is that you can just do it again if you mess up. That's the yeah. power of editing, folks. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, I when I take a really good look at your uh, resume here, there's just a lot of stuff that I didn't even know <laughs> uh, was shows in general. Like, about two years ago, you did wayside school yeah. and it's like i remember reading those books like wayside <laughs> school is falling down like what in the world like i didn't even know that was um a show like how did that come about <laughs> um so my 
gym teacher. He started two years ago when I was in sixth grade. And so he asked the administration if he could start a drama club in like the next year when I was in seventh grade. So instead, um, our administration said, well, why don't you just do a show this year? you know by the end of the year so he did he picked a script which happened to be wayside stories from wayside school um the script had a lot of details from the original books like there was the evil teacher turning kids into apples and there was the cow like principal and it had all the bringing your bell yes bringing your bell yeah it was so funny because The cow, um, we had one male actor in the entire cast, and he was the person playing the female cow. Um, So it was an interesting cast. (laughs) Oh, so was it like a Newsies thing where it's like, all right, everybody wear caps so we know your boys? No. Because there were, I think, like about six main characters. I was one of the six. There was five students that we saw throughout the entire show and then there was the new teacher the nice one miss jules and there were i think two boy like students and they were both played by girls so the one male actor that we had was playing a female cow that's all right it was crazy it was crazy it was so fun though it was magnificent (laughs) i'm sorry i i will never do that again That that was horrible that was okay. that that was bad and I should feel bad. It's um okay. <laughs> uh, yes. But um you parlayed your voice acting stuff into another role of mine um for a scene showcase called How to Get the Girl. And yeah. you wound up being the girl that Sammy Waite <laughs> show. Yes. You guys uh, settled on being in a, on a date together at some point in time. I mean, what was it, you know, kind of that kind of sort of mushy stuff, you know, you got, what was that yeah. like going to it and acting opposite Sammy? Yeah. Yeah, it was that. Yeah, that was fun. Got to be Stephanie. It's the only girl out of like, I think five that was named. I felt so accomplished. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I actually get a name. That's wonderful. I get a name. <laughs> Oh man, look at oh yes. I you know, I remember you were telling me about a lot of these shows that you did um amongst your theater things. And there was one in particular that I remember you telling me about that I was just like, I gotta hear more about this. You played <laughs> some kind of like wacky professor in a show yes. called Back to the Eighties, or what was it? What was the name of it? Yeah, it was Back to the 80s. So it was a playoff of Back to the Future. So I got casted as the role of Professor Emma Gelb. And she was supposed to be like the like knockoff character of Dr. Emmett Brown. And that, that was a really cool show because it was oh, not exactly like Back to the Future, but it had basically the same plot. So like instead of a car that went back in time, it was a hoverboard. And when she went back in time it was her mom and because the main character the three main characters was the was uh mary fitzfry the um, the main girl and then dr emma gelb or professor emma gelb that was me and then the mom that was found back in time was i think heather fritzfry so instead of you know like having to like stop their mom from doing something they had to stop her from going to this crazy tournament it was like the fuski beba die bogo fuska wait, wait hold on a second what can you can you repeat that fuski beba what, what? i don't remember exactly what it was but it's this huge tournament combined of like all like all kinds of different sports so they smashed all the sports into one oh, word. I, I was about to say like did you did you hear what you just said <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember it exactly, but it was something like Fuski, Fuski, Beba, D guy, Bo, Bob. I don't remember. Uh, uh, that just sounds like you're like, are you looking at random things in the room? Like, oh, <laughs> the, it was the sport called lamp, tissue box, pencil, Sega Genesis game. Yeah, everybody plays that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's so normal. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I'm not lying. No. <laughs> no, not lying. No. Oh. Uh, it was fun, though. Yeah. Did you guys get to uh, sing any 80s songs or was it mostly just a straight play? It was meant to be a, like a straight play, but I think we had a flash mob in there at some point or like a, no, they were in the school hallway and they started like a musical number and then the principal came in, principal strictly, he came in and like stopped it and they like walked off. So it's not, it wasn't a musical, but there was a couple of music songs in it. Gotcha. Is, gotcha. Yeah. Now I'm noticing um, one of the themes that I'm seeing here looking at your resume is that Izzy seems to have the wonderful innate ability, which, you know, this should be a feather in her cap, um, to be able to fill in for roles on very short notice. And by that, I mean, she was in Annie Jr. And she played several different roles. And apparently this was on very short notice. Did, did somebody drop out? Um. No, so I originally got casted as Duffy, one of the orphans, and I think just like an ensemble character. The only one that I filled in for was a maid, because I, I don't, I don't, I, sorry, I don't think anyone dropped out, but I think someone got moved to it, also a higher role, so then I had to get put into a maid role. That was the only one that was short notice. And I like literally got it like the day before we performed. So that one was definitely short notice. But the rest, I'm pretty sure I was casted with originally. Do you see it as a kind of a really interesting challenge to be able to fill in for a role on short notice? Or would you prefer, as I'm sure everybody does, to have the role from the very beginning and just like make it your own? Yeah, I would rather know what I was getting myself into than getting dumped on it the like night before opening. Um, but yeah, I would like to know what I am first. <laughs> well, of course. I mean, I think everybody would want to know. Um, I, actually, I I took part in a project last year. It was the um, it was just it was called the Random Movie Challenge, where. Um, this theater group that I'm with, we did a reading of a movie, but the catch was we didn't know who we were going to be cast as until an hour before the show. So oh, yeah. basically there was eight or nine of us and we did, I believe it was the movie Clue. Oh, fun. And we kind of just were like, okay, we gathered into a Zoom call and the person who was the quote unquote director, she was like, okay, I have all your names in a hat uh, and I'm going to pick it out and whatever role you get is that's the one you get. So I wound up playing Mr. Green, um, which is my favorite character in the movie. So it's like, hooray. Um <laughs> But like those are, I like, uh, that's kind of an interesting concept. I would like to see that happen more often. But then again, I feel like that would be a little more stressful. Um, it would probably work better if it's like you're actually looking at the script and you don't have to memorize anything. I feel like if you had to memorize something, you would probably just not not have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, because when you don't know what you're going to be, you have to memorize the entire thing. So you know that you're prepared for everything. Exactly. But um, I think uh, in that situation, I think that would have been fun because you would have known that you were going to get casted last second. But in general, like for Annie, if you didn't know that you were going to get casted last second, I think that's a little more stressful than if you knew that you were going to get casted like late, I guess. <laughs> well, you know, I. A lot of these outside the box kind of roles seem to really fall into Izzy's lap because it's the last major role, or I mean, I don't know if this is uh, updated currently, but uh, in November of last year, you played Uncle Festa. Yes. Yeah. Now, did you have to wear a ball cap, first of all? 
Yes, I got a bald cap and I got a pillow for a gut underneath a huge trench coat underneath a, or on top of like a huge cloak thing. It was, yeah, it was really, really hot. <laughs> Did you have to put a light bulb in your mouth like Uncle Fester? No, I really wish I was going to. I think we were planning for it, but then we never got to it. And I was like, dang it. I wish I could have, though. That would have been so fun. But I'm, I'm reading the description here. It says, included singing, dancing, many lines, voice change. What was the voice? Can you do like a little, can you give us a little, uh, little bit yeah, of the... Let the... Um, let me think of a line real quick. Little Wednesday Adams, that irresistible bundle of malice who had poisoned her own brother just for a ride in the ambulance, has grown up and found love. <laughs> oh, little Wednesday Adams. Oh. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Fun fact. Um, in the movie, he was played by Christopher Lloyd, who also played Doc Brown. In I know. So you, so you kind that. of adjacent have a little bit of uh, Christopher Lloyd. Uh, you would make him so proud. I guess uh, so. Oh my goodness! Oh, uh, so um, do you have any projects going on right now that you are in? Yes, uh, my drama club at my school is currently doing Charlotte's Web. Uh-huh. We just finished Newsies, and I was Jack in that. So it's not a completely updated resume. But, oh, you played a, a that Jack's the lead, yeah. Yeah, in Newsies, yeah, oh. that was me. Um, what was that? What was it like having to do? Because I, I feel like I've heard from more than one person that Newsies is, is an incredibly um, tiring dance-oriented show. Yes, definitely, it was amazing. I loved it. It's my favorite show I've ever done. I don't know if that's just because I got the lead or if it's just because it's Newsies. But it was amazing, like every, like almost everyone had like a different accent and then our costumes looked pretty good. The dances were really good. Um, King of New York was amazing. It was a huge tap number. It looked so great. Um, our, 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 <laughs> our leads were great. Um, Kath, um, Lauren Marshall, she goes to my school and she played Catherine Jack's love interest. She was amazing. She has a great singing voice, great acting, and she just moved to my school this year, so I didn't even know her before then, so I'm really glad that she got a chance to be a lead before she had to leave anyway. Wow, but I see. Really great. How'd you sleep last night? On me back, mush. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's actually in the musical, but that's one of my favorite lines in the movie. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have that. We played more off the Broadway version than the movie version. But we had most of the same songs, just different yeah. words. So. Oh man! So did did Crutchy get all beaten up and thrown? He, he gets thrown in jail at, at one point, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, he. Um, Crutchy was played by a girl. Her name is Ava. I love her. She's like my favorite um person to work with. She. Mm, she didn't get beat up, but she did get dragged off stage without her crutch by the evil Delancey brothers. Um, and then later in her like solo song, she mentions that she got beat up, but we never you know, saw it. I've seen a couple of different performances of Newsies and Newsies Jr. And there was yeah. one version where Crutchy does his song and the kid who was playing Crutchy, like, I don't know, like, they they just caked him with bruise makeup. It's like, oh, like, what did they do to this poor kid? Like, oh. did they beat him with his own crutch? My goodness. That's what he says in the song. Um, oh. Snyder soaked me real good with my crutch. Oh, the wow. lyric. So. Well, ne- never mind. There you go. <laughs> That's yeah. great. So you, um, you just did Newsies and you're doing Charlotte's Web. Who are you playing? I play the gander, um, the goose's husband, okay. and one of my, my friend Taylor, She, I've done like all of my drama club shows with her, I've been with her since sixth grade in drama club, um, and she is the goose, so I'm really happy about that, because we get to be husband and wife, and like bickering all the time, and 
you get to repeat a lot, which is hilarious. I love it. And you, you know, Charlotte's Web, great story, but very depressing. It's like, oh, by the way, Charlotte died. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like, yeah, we're still your favorite character. It's fine. So, you know, it's, it's okay, folks. It's okay. <laughs> the, the little babies are there. They're like, yay, you, you were great, Wilbur, or whatever. Oh, my gosh. I'm like that. But who would you see? Like, my favorite character is Templeton. So, like, who is who you got playing Templeton? The ring? Um, her name is Grace. I think her last name is Wallace, but I'm not sure. She's doing pretty good. Um, she was in Newsies as an ensemble character. There were a lot of our leads were ensemble in the last show. So, I'm glad that they're, they're getting a step up and a lead and a chance to really embrace the theater. And get in the spotlight for their last year, or you know, second to last year. So. And before big old high school starts, creeping. yeah, yeah, because our drama club is from sixth grade to eighth grade, mm -hmm. and we have one eighth. Because my coach said that Charlotte and Wilbur are basically the only two leads in the play. Everyone else is basically ensemble. So Charlotte is an eighth grader, and um, Wilbur is a seventh grader. So. Templeton is a seventh grader. No, I think I think actually Templeton is a sixth grader. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I'll, I'll go. I'll go ask. <laughs> okay. Hey, hey, Templeton. What what grade are you about? Just <laughs> well, as I look at the old clock on the wall, I see that we are starting to run out of a bit of time. As wonderful as all this discussion has been, we do have to. Uh, start to get to the last question of our wonderful, wonderful program. And that question, as I ask all of my uh, performers and interviewers is thusly, Isabel, if somebody were to say to you, hey, I want to get into acting or theater or dancing or any sort of activity like that, what would be the piece of advice that you gave them in order to best succeed in getting into the, the theater world? Well, First, I would probably give the person a like example of where to go. Like, I go to Find Your Light. That's where I did Adam's Family. But once they're there, I would definitely say don't give up. Every role is important, whether you think it is or not. So that is absolutely true. What is the old saying? Uh, there's no small roles, just yeah, small people. Mm -hmm. Everything. Every role is important, from the lead role all the way to somebody who's just standing around in the background. You could be newsy number 27, but you are important. <laughs> you are very important, newsy, yes. Well, as the outro plays us out, I do want to thank Izzy, my guest. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you for inviting me. And yes, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for listening in. We'll see you on the next episode. Goodbye, everyone. These are the performers I know. These are the performers I know. I know. These are the performers I know.